Hey everybody, welcome to Tradehead Live. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Mohit Srivastava. I'm a developer evangelist at Salesforce here. And today we will talk about how we can build and release Salesforce CLI plugins. Before I begin, there's a forward looking statement here. If you are making any purchasing decisions, please make based on the current offerings of the product. So here's our agenda for today. We'll talk about introduction to Salesforce CLI. We'll explore the Salesforce CLI architecture. And then we'll answer the question, why do we even need to build a Salesforce CLI plugin when we have Salesforce CLI? And then we will talk about tools and technologies for the CLI plugin development. And then I'll walk you through how can we design, build, test, and release these Salesforce CLI plugins. Um, at the end, I'll leave you with some of the CLI plugin development best practices and some reference material via Trailmix. So let's get started. So before even we talk about plugins, it's important to understand that plugins are an extension of Salesforce CLI. So what's a Salesforce CLI? So it's a command line utility tool that simplifies development with your Salesforce org. One key thing to understand is the Salesforce CLI itself uses Oakleaf. Now Oakleaf is an open source framework for building a command line interface in Node.js. You can go to Oakleaf website and see how you can easily build a, a command line application using the framework. Salesforce CLI basically uses that. And for Salesforce CLI plugin development, you use Salesforce CLI as the core. Let's talk about Salesforce CLI architecture. So when you install Salesforce CLI, you will see core plugins, plugin generators, and custom plugins. So core plugin is essentially a set of out of box provided tool set for you. And a plugin generator essentially is a generator tool that allows you to scaffold a plugin development project. We'll see that in action shortly. To install Salesforce CLI, go to developer.salesforce.com slash tools slash SFDXCLI. From where, depending on your operating system, you can install one. Now let's explore the architecture a bit. To understand the architecture, let's do SFDX plugins and say core plugins. So, so as you can see, there are core plugins here. You can see there are a lot of Oakleaf plugin from which the Salesforce DX CLI is built. And then you will see that Salesforce DX itself is a plugin. Now there are different plugins underneath, underneath it. One of the things I want you to pay attention to is when you do SFDX, you can help on it by doing and help. The other feature that I want to make you aware is if you're on a Mac, you can auto complete it. You can auto complete it using SFDX and then just pressing the tab key. And this will show you all the autocomplete features. And say yes, so it's going to give you all the commands that come out of the box. Now, one of the things you'll notice is there is SFDX plugins. And when you do a help on SFDX plugins, you will see there is a command to actually generate a plugin. So before we deep dive into how can we generate our own custom plugins, let's understand why do we even need to build a Salesforce CLI plugin. So these are some of the use cases that I thought uh, will be helpful to understand when we need Salesforce CLI plugin. Of course, Salesforce CLI provides all the out-of-box commands but there are times where you need to extend those commands and need your own commands. For example, let's say you're building an API for your developer tools using Salesforce metadata or the tooling API or any other Salesforce related API. A good example is let's say you're building a desktop electron application or an extension for VS Code, you know, with your own set of commands. Then you can use the Salesforce DX CLI to build APIs. The other example is, let's say you want to build a command that involves operations with multiple org. An example for this is, let's say you have a large number of test classes and you divide them and you want to run these test classes in parallel in different sandboxes. 
you might want to build a Salesforce CLI plugin to simplify this. The other thing where this can be useful is if you're building something for CI CD. An example would be, let's say you're building a front-end spa app and you're using bundlers like Webpack or Rollup for your development workflow. You might want to simplify that um, by wrapping all the scripts that you have in a SFDX plugins. All right, before we even get into the scaffolding and generation of a sample project, I want to discuss the tools and technologies for the CLI plugin development. So you need to be familiar with Yarn, um, Yarn or NPM. Yarn is a, a package manager. You can install Yarn using NPM. The other thing you'll need is TypeScript. The TypeScript brings static typing along with latest ES versions of JavaScript. And you need a VS Code editor. So let's demonstrate how we can scaffold a sample Salesforce CLI plugin project. I've created a separate directory for the project. Let's call it as um, Trailhead Live plugin. And uh, I will cd into that. All right, and let's create a SFDX plugin project scaffold. So I'm going to accept the defaults here. Let's just accept the defaults. All right, so a scaffold is generated. Let's actually open up in our VS Code and see uh, the, sk the skeleton of the project. All right, so the files to pay attention are the source files. So in this example, there is an already an example command, which is an hello arc command. So for this, uh, it provides a sample code. We'll, we'll walk through this code line by line now. And I want to also make you pay attention to package.json file. So there is, for this project to build, there are all dependencies have been captured in the package.json and you get it by default. One thing you should note is these dependencies might be outdated. Right? And one thing I would like to do is get rid of this yarn.log file so that we can get the dependencies, we can update all dependencies to the latest. So let me open the terminal and so that we can type it directly in the VS Code terminal. So I'll do a yarn install in this project so that we get the latest uh, and greatest uh, for all the dependencies that are here. So now we have all the latest dependencies here. All right, so now they link this plugin. And the way you can link that is by using SFDX plugins link command. And this should link your plugin. All right, so there is uh... All right, so by default, what plugin does is it provides a command so that we can understand every bit of the code that is provided by default. So by default, there's a command for hello arg. So let's run it. So as you can see, it starts pointing towards, you know, we should pass username or auth options, etc. So let's look into the code. So notice one thing is, you know, to generate a command called hello colon arg, What we have is we have to go and add a directory called hello. And then for arg, we have a TypeScript file called arg.ts. So let's look at this file. So first thing you will notice here is you can import sfdx command from at salesforce slash command npm. 
and also the SMDX error and message from add cells for slash core npm. And there are some more utilities like uh, any JSON type or function from add cells for slash ts slash types. So there are a couple of things to pay attention here. So one thing is when you are actually designing the commands, we need to put some static messages. For example, the command that you just saw showed an error. So to do that, you'll have to actually go to, uh, you can do that and put everything in a message folder and in a, in a file. So we have arc.json file here that has all the messages that we, we have. So this line basically imports that directory. So it imports by something called dirt name. Um, and as you can see, we can simply load these messages in this file by using this messages.load messages and putting the name of the plugin and then putting the name of the file. So let's say I want my own custom files, I'll create one more with .json under messages directory. And all I need to do is say message.load messages and the plugin name and the, the, the file name. All right. Also notice that, you know, to start writing a plugin, you always have to create a TypeScript class that extends from SFDX command class. All right. So when you when you do SFDX commands, so when you actually generate a command, one of the things you want to do is provide descriptions and examples. For example, for this hello world command, if I say hello help, you will see that there is a description, you know, for the command. And the description and the examples can be provided by using the static variables examples and the description here and you can actually uh, so the descriptions come from command description which basically is in the org.json also notice that when you actually type there are some input parameters like for example i need name i need this force flag here so for example, when I do SFDX hello, hello or command, and I do a help, I see that there are two parameters. One of them is force, which is basically a Boolean flag. And the other one is the name to print. So for example, if I say name equals Mohit, it should actually, okay, so I need to pass username and auth option. So we'll, we'll get into that. Like why is it asking for uh, this thing? So we'll get into the logic. So, so let's imagine you check this require username equals true. This means this command will require an arc with username and a connection to the arc. Otherwise the command will fail. And that's the reason why you're seeing an error here because, you know, we have turned it on and that means, you know, there is, there is a validation somewhere which says, you know, if the command does not have username or if the project doesn't have an authentication to the Salesforce environment, it's going to fail. So there's also another thing called supports dev hub username. That means this command requires a dev hub. So for example, if this is change to from true to false, that means we, your command doesn't require a dev hub. So let's say it requires project equals false. That means this command will not require a project workspace. But if it says true, that means you need a project workspace by default. Otherwise, this command will fail. In this case, we don't have a project uh, or SFDX project. So we chose to keep this uh, as false. The other key aspect is the run method. And this is what runs when you actually type the command. For example, when I say sfdx hello org slash name equals mohit, and when I run this, this is where it actually starts executing the logic that is there inside this run method. Notice with async, this is an ES6 syntax, basically says that 
This logic happens in asynchronous context. And notice this, which says promise any JSON, which means the written type of the response from this method should be of any JSON type. Now, any JSON is a special type or is that is imported from at sales for slash TS types node module. All right, let's look at the logic that's been written here. So one of the things you will notice is there is a connection that it is getting from this dot arc dot get connection. So the SFDX command has this property arg where you can say, okay, get me the connection for this. And once you have a connection, you can use that connection to query uh, uh, or execute a SQL basically. In this case, it's actually querying the organization object here. And if the organization object is not there, that means it's throwing up this better as error message. And that's what we are getting here. All right. So let's see, you know, the real power of connection object. So one of the things you can do is to explore this. We can explore by just typing this dot arg dot connection. So when you say connection dot, notice that you have different methods here. And one of the things to notice is access to APIs. So for example, access to tooling API. Let's say I want to execute a tooling query, right? I can do that by doing tooling dot, and then I'll get an option to query. Uh, similarly, if I want to create a tooling object, I can do tooling dot create or S object. So essentially what this does is the command utility actually wraps up a well-known JavaScript library, NPM library called JSForce that provides all the capability to update or upsert or play with, you know, tooling API and metadata API. So for example, let's say I want to do a metadata operation. I can use metadata dot, and then, you know, I can um, execute a deploy here or describe or um, do update and other operations that are there. You can do that. You can see that by just auto completing it. All right, now that we have explored this whole sort of a project, um, Let's actually see an example of a project that I built for something that I needed. And let's see how uh, we can, you know, build and release uh, a plugin here. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to create a Salesforce CLI plugin to see test data. Uh, we will leverage a Mokuru schema. Mokuru is a tool basically to generate sample test data. Uh, and this is very useful. Let's say I'm building a demo and I need a sample test data. Then, you know, one of the tools I always go is go to Mokuru website. Also, thanks to uh, my fellow evangelist, uh, Kevin Poorman, for giving me this idea. All right. So how did I build this plugin? Right. Um, so we'll talk about the design um, parameters that I chose for this plugin and uh, the mechanism that I use to build this. So you can actually get to the, the project by going to my GitHub handle here at uh, uh, mshavasa 13 slash test data and see the whole code for this project. And uh, also we'll go to Mokuru. So one of the things that Mokuru allows you to do is generate schemas. So you can generate your schema as you like, and then based on the schema, you can actually generate test data. And they provide you a simple API to actually invoke via curl, where you can get the, the data in either in JSON format or um, in any other format that you need, um, like CSV, or let's say you need the data in XML format. A pretty handy tool if you are looking to generate some test data. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to put together an SFDX plugin from where I can just give my schema and the keys and the plugin will auto-generate 
test data for me in JSON or CSV as I indicated. So the first thing when generating your CLI plugins is actually thinking about your parameters. That is what sort of parameters that you want to do. So in this uh, plugin, so in this plugin, what I wanted was obviously I wanted to control a few things like, uh, for example, the count of the records that I want from Mokuru, uh API. I also wanted to control where I can put the test data. You know, I, I wanted to provide a default path in the data directory. But at the same time, I also wanted to provide a parameter to the developer so that the developer can indicate the data directory where they want to put. Also the format, right? So I wanted a parameter for the format. And then I wanted to indicate Salesforce as object. So let's say I'm generating a data for account. I wanted to provide an S object parameter here. And then the schema ID, and this was required. This is required by the Mokuru API. So uh, Mokuru schema is something that it's a unique ID generated by Mokuru. So what I wanted to do was uh, provide a parameter for that, which is required and also add a validation. In fact, the CLI automatically validates. If you turn on the, the required flag, we'll see that in a short one. Also, the other thing that you will notice is, you know, there's no key parameter, but the API actually requires a key. But one thing to note is key is very secret. You know, you don't want to actually, uh, you know, put it in either source control or somewhere because the key is a sensitive information. So I wanted to use something like an environment variable where somebody can just set it up for the session by using uh, the environment variables depending on the OS. So, so there's a prerequisite for that, which you require a Mokuru account, you require the API key, and then you can set your API key by using export command or if you are on Windows, you can actually use the environment variables provided in the window to set one. Um, the environment variable name is mapi key, which is macro API key. All right, so let's actually see this in action. Now to install this, uh, the installation instructions are here if you are actually consuming it. And if you are enhancing this, you know, you can git clone the project, yarn install to get all the dependencies and then link the plugin and then uh, basically make code changes and we will soon see how we can even publish this. All right, so let's actually install this plugin. Um, so let me actually get out of this and let's just install this plugin. I'm gonna say SFDX plugins install and the name of the plugin, which is Data. right? So this is gonna ask me for, okay, this is not digitally signed. I'm gonna say yes, okay. I accept that it is not digitally signed. Uh, and it actually installed uh, the plugin. Okay, so now what we need to do is, let's actually go to, uh, go and execute the command, one of the commands here. So to do that, actually, I'll go into one of the, the Salesforce projects that I have. Let me actually get into a uh, Salesforce DX project. Um, let me pick this one. I've been building something using the trail head, I guess. Trail head has a project that I was exploring and so I just use that. All right, so now what I want is, I probably want some test data. Maybe I want to insert some accounts into one of the Salesforce account. Maybe I want to insert accounts into Salesforce object. Um, so now that I have the plugin, right, and I've created a, a schema of, of all the fields data that I want. Now that I have this, you know, I just want to execute a command and get, get everything in my data folder, right? So I'm going to say SFDX and then the command. So I'm going to just copy paste it from here. So before that, remember that you have to set the key. So let me set the API key here. So I'm going to say export and then say API key and then equals and then put my API key. It will be only valid for the session, 
and after this session i'll i'll revoke it everyone so that nobody gets access to this api for free all right so now what i'm going to do is after setting this i'm going to execute the command to actually get me the data so let's just type in the command here um, one of the things is I've already put examples and if you look at the code list, let's also open in parallel the code base for this whole project, um, which is here in the Git. We can also open that in the VS Code. We'll open it. So, so here's, here's the command. As you can see, test data is my namespace for the command. And then I have the topic which is generate so test data generate and then inside this you know there are certain flags so i have some examples we can, we can just use those examples here and you know these examples that i have here in the static flag gets displayed to the developer here by when he just does a help on this so as you can see it displays all the flag also the example so it's very important to populate these two when you are building your plugin and uh, also notice that uh, what i've done is i've put all the messages all the static messages in a folder called messages here so you should find messages folder here and it has a test data plugin.json where i put all the hard-coded uh, values into one file all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to just run this one of the commands here and uh, see it in action. So one thing notice is, you know, I need the proper schema ID and uh, here's my schema ID that I can, I can paste it from Mahu. All right, so now that I have this you know this command should go through successfully and generate a test data so as you can see the command ran and it gave me by default i think it's 100 number of rows um let's check that so by default the default count flag should have the default value i think it's 10 but i think we gave um, the command actually we said give 100 rows of data right so so yeah so this command generated 100 rows of data by calling the api from mockeru um, and as you can see we have you know a sample test data that is ready to actually go in our salesforce environment you know if you have mapped all the fields properly here in your mockeru with the same api name uh, you have the JSON data here and, you know, Salesforce provides, uh, the DX already provides you a command to do a data load. Actually, there's a command called for data, I guess. Yes. So there's a command called for data tree, which allows you to insert records using the tree API and you should be able to use it. Now you can also use the bulk API if you're inserting records in bulk and this requires like a CSV file. And uh, that's why what I did is the command also provides you an option where you can say, okay, you know, or change the format of it to say CSV. You can actually do that and it should generate a CSV file. So I, I need to put a, a format here. All right, so now it generated a CSV file with, you know, random set of data that, again, you can use to essentially put into your Salesforce environment. So that's the demo of uh, this plugin. Now let's see what um, what are the, the key components that are required to build this. So let me open the project uh, for this. All right, so now that we have this project, um, let's look at 
what did I do? So we go again to generate the command. We need a namespace. So test data is namespace, and then the command we gen we have to generate a TypeScript file which extends the SMDX, and then you need examples and flags. Uh, so all the input parameters uh, need a flag and description for them, and you know whether they are required or not. For example, I want to make schema required, angles required, flag. And you can put default for some of them. For example, I wanted a default count here, so I have the default count here. And then, you know, I wanted this to work, um, you know, outside the DX project. That is, irrespective of whether this is a Salesforce CLI or not, you know, I wanted this to work irrespective of, you know, um, uh, Salesforce DX project. So I said, okay, it does not require any workspace. That means you can run it anywhere and it does not require any username or authentication to the org because uh, you know if somebody wants to use outside salesforce they can still use this uh, plugin all right so let's see what uh, what logic it require or did i use you know obviously we need you know kind of an endpoint um, and then you know i'm using process.environment variable to capture the, the api key now notice if you don't provide the API key, it's gonna throw an error message. Like for example, let's say I set an API key as null. So let's say I set it as yum API key is my variable and I set it as null and then I execute the same command. It's gonna throw me an error saying, you know, the mockery API key is not required. So this shows an example of how you can uh, capture your error case scenarios and throw user-friendly messages to your user. For example, this message which says mockery API is not configured, add your API key to an environment variable. So now the next step is basically to initiate a HTTP callout and uh, for that I'm using a node module called node fetch. Uh, node fetch allows you to, you can use any um, secure HTTPS client from node. Node fetch is popular uh, utility. So I'm using that to actually make a call out uh, to, an, to the Mockery API. Now there's some processing that I'm doing which is based on, okay, if it is, you know, CSV data, I just want to use that, you know, if it is a JSON data, I want to wrap it with attributes of Salesforce object, you know, so that it is in the same format that Salesforce data commands actually require the data. So I'm creating an attribute um, in my JSON, so for example, all right, so if you look at one of the JSONs that we had, you will see that everything gets wrapped with this attribute, and that is what this specific function is doing. It's just wrapping up those attributes, and then I'm creating a file, you know. Um, again, I'm using the, the node library here, which basically, um, you know, creates the final response and then creates the JSON file using the FS node module here. I'm just using the out-of-box FS node uh, module, which allows you to work with your file systems by reading file and writing files. So I'm writing a file here. When you need a response, right, you can construct a response and return that from your run method, and that's what gets returned and displayed on your uh, command line. All right, now having built this, uh, there's one thing that I wanted to talk about that is the the importance of writing tests you know so there's a test folder that's been uh, provided out of the box and you follow the same hierarchy structure here by creating uh, your command and then under that it's you know you create a dot test dot ts file for your uh, for your command um, so it's important to write proper test cases so that you can actually be confident that uh, things work when you unit. Um, so one of the things is you can actually use Oakleft's test. You know, you are free to use Jest or, or Mocha or, you know, whatever tool that you use for testing. Um, but note that, you know, the Oakleft provides some testing framework which has fancy tests built into it. That is, you know, let's say I want to test uh, operations of, okay, I want to you know, capture everything in the standard out or standard error. Everything is, you know, abstracted for you so that you don't have to actually reverse. Um, so everything is abstracted for you so that you don't have to 
again reinvent the stuff. So I like to use um, what is provided out of box um, using the Oclip test. So I import that um, and then I import all of the modules that are required. So what I do is I basically execute the command that I need to execute and then you know I validate whether uh, I'm getting the proper error messages. So there are four test cases that I've written for the use case here. One is to basically make sure my error is captured properly when I have the environment variables as null. And the second is, you know, when I actually have the environment variable and if, um, you know, the, the server is responding proper. Now, in the test context, you don't want to actually call the server, actual server, right? You want to mock it up. So knock is a library that provides capability to proxy and say you want to mock it up. So it looks for the URL format and based on that, you can actually reply with a mock JSON like here. Um, and then you just validate it. And similarly, I have a reply for 200 response and 500 response and just I validate whether, you know, my files are getting created properly or not, um, you know, and also validate my output, uh, the standard output messages. Uh, similarly, I have also a test case when my format is uh, a CSV and I validate that, um, you know, a file is generated. Uh, this is just a demonstration of the sample use cases. You can come up with more meaningful quality test cases for your use case and uh, and you can test that. You can actually run the test by using yarn test, which basically invokes the mocha function, which basically starts uh, executing this. So as you can see, all my test cases are fast here. So I'm, I'm good to go. All right, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about um, is you know maintainability of this project now that i have this you know and open sourced it there might be you know other users enhancing it and adding things uh, one of the things uh, i have test for is to make sure that you know these tests actually run and you know if there are new functionalities that's been added and you know if there is anything that breaks uh, our test actually catches them the other thing what I've done is to use CI CD into this project. Um, by default, you will see there will be utilities for Circle CI and uh, um, other CI tools, uh, but I prefer to use uh, GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions are a powerful way to do a CI CD uh, for your project, uh, where, you know, on, let's say somebody is merging a PR to the branches, I I want to automatically run all my test cases and if all the test cases are fine, I want to publish this project to an NPM using NPM publish. Um, so here's a sample for you, you know, in case you want to use GitHub Actions um, to publish this. Also, I wanted to check this with, uh, you know, various node versions. So, uh, you know, any feature that's going to be built in the feature branches, um, I want to run the, the yarn test. So, so I have automated this and I also wanted to submit this uh, code coverage to, you know, whenever new functionalities are added to this plugin, you know, I wanted to calculate the whole code coverage and then submit it to uh, codecope.io where I can visualize and see uh, what's the coverage for my entire project for the unit test cases that I have. Pretty much similar to Apex uh, test class coverage if you are familiar, but here we are using an external tool called codecoverage.io to visualize it. Example, you know, it's uh, using codecoverage.io, which provides me some coverage to know what are the lines that I've covered and what are the lines that I've, I have not covered. And I can visualize it using their graphs to see, um, you know, what, where are the areas to actually improve. All right, so let's, uh, let's jump. All right, let's jump back to the presentation. So here's, here's the path uh, from this conversation um, that one needs to do uh, during the design, build, test, and release of CLI plugin is the first step is you decide your topic and commands. Uh, follow the style guidelines in the documentation. I'm going to share the, the official documentation. Follow the, the style guidelines there for your commands. Also, think about your command parameters. That is, you know, your proper names and meaningful descriptions for every parameter that you use. Think of examples and help text because, you know, as, as a CLI user, they'll be using help to get more details about your commands. And, you know, 
if you are if you want to maintain your code think about modularity you know if if you have a complex plugin think about how you can modularize it like for example create helpers you know if there are multiple commands sharing the same logic and then i always recommend you test and debug uh, the cli plugin you can easily debug um, the cli plugin by using uh, dev suspend command this command and i want to debug this um, i just say dev suspend and notice for this you have to actually configure your vs code uh, launch.json uh, to make sure you have both the local and the remote paths as indicated here so once you do that and once you say suspend you will see that you know it stops and waits for your node debugger so you can actually use this to attach it and then from here on you should be able to actually put breakpoint let's talk about some of the cli plugin development best practices so one of the best practices is always choose a namespace Avoid using force as namespace because this is reserved by Salesforce. And all the Salesforce commands, as you'd have noticed, starts with this. You type SFTX followed by force as your namespace. So choose a different namespace which is more meaningful to your organization or to the functionality that you're building. Also, the other thing is always choose meaningful topic and command names. One of the things to do is use spinners, you know, if if there is a time between your synchronous process. Your commands, let's say, take a lot of time, a lot of processing. You might want to indicate that to your users by creating a spinner. And if the command is asynchronous, provide a wait parameter so that um, they can keep waiting or your command line can keep waiting. Also, always display and handle errors. Write unit slash integration tests. That's very important and we explore. And always automate your release of the plugin using CICD setup. GitHub Actions might be a good way to do it, but you can use uh, the tools of your choice using um, CircleCI or Jenkins or any other uh, continuous integration server that you want to use. Awesome resources here from community and also from Salesforce. I've collected all of them in a trail mix. You can click on that URL and navigate through and find all the resources there. I appreciate you taking time for this uh, talk and I thank you so much for joining today.